Let's have an example on business income. Let's have a question. The question says, Unicorn Generations Limited, which is UGL, is an electricity generation company that operates electricity generation facilities in Uganda. Provided below is the financial statements extract for the period ended 31st July 2021. So here is the extract of the income statement. We have the income where we have the commission income from ringo dam and other operating income we have expenditure where we have staff costs and employee benefits administration expenses depreciation charge then we have operating profit or loss which is this one then we have additional information Additional information. Additional information like this. It's a lot. Yeah, we can't read all of it. We shall read as we are doing the question. So let, let, let's look at what is required of us. Required, they want us to compute UGL's chargeable income and corporation tax payable for the year ended 31st July 2021. Then part B, the saying in accordance with the Income Tax Act Chapter 340, explain the conditions under which a person is allowed a deduction for bad debts written off. Yeah, we saw, we, we looked at this in one of our videos, yeah, the, the conditions for bad debts to be allowed as a deduction. First is that the person must have taken all the necessary steps to recover the money but just failed. Then another thing is that the debt should be specific in nature. Then you must have supporting documentation. Another thing is that in case it is a loan that is granted to any person by a financial institution and that, and that person was carrying out any of these activities, farming, forestry, fish farming, beekeeping, animal husbandry and similar operations yeah in case you want more answers you can go to the previous videos it's there under the expenses that are specifically allowed yeah, so we are going to handle part a compute ugl's char chargeable income and corporation tax payable for the year in the 31st july 2021 So we shall start. UG, Union Generation Limited, UGL, chargeable income. Details, then amount and amount. The first thing we start with is the profit before tax. And it was given here in the question. The operating profit or loss, it is this one. So it's the first thing you read. 8,922,000 then you add the non-allowable deductions yeah, and under non-allowable deductions the first thing you rate is the depreciation charge that was given in the question yeah so in the question we have depreciation charge of 26 million yeah and these figures so you sorry about that it is the second thing that it's the first thing that you write under non allowables. Yeah, depreciation charge. So the depreciation charge is twenty six million four hundred eighty six thousand. Yeah. Then we read our question, we read the additional information. According to the to the question they will a concession fees here. Concession fees, it has more information in note one. So we go to note one. Note one here, they have said included in the concession fees is 652 million received in advance from a contractor for a 15 year concession contract. It is money that is received in advance. Any money that is received in advance is not 
it is not supposed to be taxed in the current year it is supposed to be taxed in the year when it was incurred so the money that we receive in advance is all, all the all the prepaid things prepaid things are what uh, non sorry are allowables we do not tax them when they are prepaid we tax them in the year that they are incurred yeah so the allowable deductions so the concession fee of 652 million is received in advance so it is allowable we subtract it cuz here they added it they added it yeah so we subtract it we come here and allowables we rate prepaid concessions it's 652 million but remember our figures are in three zeros yes yeah, the reason why we are rating it like this that is the first note then the second note they have told us administration expenses it has more information in note 2 it has more information in note 2 so we come to note 2 here the said included in administration expenses are the following first is a donation of 6 million 359000 to white angels a local football club in in that city the club was exempted from income tax from july 2022 to june 2021 we said any donations that are made to exempt organizations they are considered allowable deductions they are specifically allowed in case it is made to an exempt organization and they have said that this football club is exempted from income tax so this donation is allowed it is allowed yeah it is allowed and here they have said it is included in administration expenses so here we are supposed to subtract it we are supposed to put it under allowables as a donation but since it was already subtracted we cannot subtract it again you get what i'm saying it was included in administration expenses and administration expenses are being subtracted so we, we we cannot subtract it the second time but in case it was not subtracted we were supposed to put it here under the allowables but it, it is already subtracted so we can't subtract it again so we ignore it yeah. then we continue still included in the administration expenses that said training expenses of shillings 56 million 763,000 used to train Ugandan resident plant operators after commissioning of one of its power plants in West Nile. So we, under expenses that are specifically allowed, we had training expenses. Yeah, when the training period does not exceed five years and to only the citizens and permanent residents of Uganda. Yeah, it is allowed as an expense. So this training this training expense is allowed. It is supposed to be subtracted. Uh, sorry about the background. We have very many animals in my neighborhood, so you will excuse me for that. So the training expenses this eh? it is supposed to be allowed as an expense so we are supposed to subtract it so we are supposed to put it here we are supposed to put it here as an allowable deduction but they told us that it is included in what it is included in administration expenses and administration expenses are being subtracted already so we cannot subtract it again but in case it was not subtracted in case it was not included here yeah, we we're supposed to subtract it. We're supposed to put it as an allowable deduction. 
so we ignore other training expenses. Then another thing that is included in administration expenses, they say grid monitoring software of 4 million with an estimated useful life of 5 million. And this is an intangible asset. It is software, it is an intangible asset. And we said in case of the cost of the intangible asset, it is allowed as a deduction. But what we do, we get A out of B, whereby A is the cost of the asset and B is the useful life. So it is 4 million out of 5. So we get four million. We get four million divided by five, which is eight hundred thousand, and it is the cost of the intangible asset. Yes, so the cost of the monitoring software is eight hundred thousand. It is allowed. Yeah. So we we come here. And allowable deductions, we rate the cost of the intangible asset. It is 800,000, but the figures are in three zeros. Yeah. Then we continue with our question. So when, when we are dealing with intangible assets, the cost itself, the cost of the intangible asset is none allowed but the but the amortization part of it the one that we calculated this is allowed but this is none allowed so we, we we shall go in none allowed and we rate the cost and then in allowed it's where we rate this the eight hundred thousand is allowed but the four million is none allowed so you come here under none allowed you rate software you put the four million the 4 million yeah you you put the 4 million then here you put the cost of the intangible asset which is the 800,000 yeah the amortization part of it is allowed but then the cost itself it is a capital expenditure it is none allowed hope you're getting it then another thing that is included in administration expenses is director's allowance. That say the director's allowance not included in their employment benefits is this. The director's allowance not included in in their employment benefit it is one hundred fourteen million. Yeah, it it was not taxed in employment income. So if something is not taxed in employment income, it has to be taxed in business income. Yeah, since it was not included in employment benefits, so here it becomes none allowed. It becomes none allowed. So we come here under non allowables and we raise the director's allowance 114 million. Then another thing that, that is included is the transfer of 942 million to an ESCO account in United States as a condition for a concession agreement. Yeah, transfers are, are taxed. So it is a non allowed. So you come here and a non allowed you rate transfer to ESCO account. It is that 942 million. It is. It is non allowed. Then we continue with the question, the additional information. So the things of wear and tear, initial allowance, all the capital deductions, they start from here. Once they give you this information, all things start from here. The capital deductions, wear and tear, initial allowance, industrial building deduction. Yeah, so additional information, they say the Opening tax written down value as at 1st August 2021 were as follows. 
these are the written down values for class one class two then class three then by saying during the year ugl bought the following items for its arua substation arua arua is 50 kilometers away from kampala it is more than 50 kilometers away from kampala yeah so they have said during during the year they bought the following for the arua substation first is the six brand brand new cabin pickups each costing 141 million so the cabin pickups like when you are reading this you you have to first find out whether they qualify either for wear and tear industrial building deduction farming de deductions or initial allowance yeah so six brand new cabin double cabin pickups each costing 140m they qualify for wear and tear and they fall in the third class because they are depreciable assets yeah so they qualify for wear and tear then for initial allowance initial allowance they told us initial allowance for eligible property it means any plant machinery wholly used in the production of income included in gross income but it excludes goods and passenger transport vehicles so this is a transport vehicle six brand new double cabin pickups they are transport vehicles so they do not qualify for initial allowance so these they 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 don't qualify for initial allowance but they qualify for wear and tear then the second one is the heavy duty thermal generators at 252.3 million so the thermal ge ge generators they it is plant and machinery yeah so it qualifies for initial allowance it is eligible then a brand new electric forklift at a cost of 90 million forklift it's not a transport vehicle yeah it is a machine yeah it qualifies for initial allowance then a new set of power plant alternators at at 43 million point two it is a plant and we and we said for eligible property it is any plant and machinery wholly used in the production of income so any set of power plant alternators it also qualifies for initial allowance yeah therefore the next thing we are doing is to compute for initial allowance and then where and here and we shall start with initial allowance initial allowance you put the column for items then the cost and then the initial allowance uh, all the all the items that were given there is no building so we shall not have industrial building allowance we shall only have initial allowance for eligible property yeah since there was no building in the question so this one did not qualify for initial allowance since it is a transport vehicle then the heavy duty thermal generators at 252.3 million it qualifies for initial allowance since it's a machine thermal generator this then the, the, the initial allowance for eligible property is 50 percent sorry about that so the initial allowance for eligible property is 50 percent so you get two five two three two five two point three times 50 divide by a hundred is one to six point one five which is this yeah then the forklift it also qualifies for initial allowance 90 
fifty percent is the same as a half. So ninety divided by two is forty five. Then power plant alternators for three point two divided by two it is twenty one point six. Yeah. So after that you add you add to get the the total initial allowance this plus this plus this to get this. Then we go to the wear and tear schedule. The first thing we write in the wear and tear schedule is the written down values, these ones. For class 1, it was 800 million. For class 2, it was 78 million, that one. Then for class 3, 818 million, this. Yeah, then we add the additions. Additions, it's cost minus initial allowance. And we only had we only had the pickup as the only depreciable asset in the question. So it's the only thing that qualified for wear and tear. So we add the pickup, they were six. Six brand new cabin pickups, each at one for six. So we multiply one for six. One four sorry one four one times six we get eight four six so eight four six is what we write here and additions pickup vehicles are in the third class in wear and tear yeah hope you remember that it is in the third class the reason why we are putting it here then for here we do not have anything in the first and second class so we get the total total or the depreciable value the depreciable value here it is the same thing because there is nothing to add even here then here we get this plus this to get this Uh, this plus this to get this then we get wear and tear wear and tear we get 40 percent of this we get this i need to put in a calculator 40 out of 100 times 8004 Eight nine zero zero zero. That's what we get, and it's the one that we put here. You do the same thing for this thirty percent of this to get this, then twenty percent of this to get this. Then after you get that total, this plus this plus this, you get this, and this is the wear and tear. So. We come back to our table. This initial allowance is allowed as a deduction, so you write initial allowance the total that we got here. This it is allowed as a deduction. You write it here, then where and tear this total. You also allow it. After you add this to get this, then we subtract. We get the profit before tax. We add the allowables. We less the non -al Sorry. We get the profit before tax. We add the non allowables. We less the allowables. Yeah. And what we get is the chargeable income. Then after that, we get 30% of the chargeable income. And what we get is the tax payable. Yeah. What we get is the tax payable. And it's what they asked for in the question. Thanks for watching. In case of any questions, please put them in the comment section.